Alrighty, today I want to talk about looping versus recursion. So both of these things, when they're first introduced to people who are learning how to program, are often discussed as things where you have a task, you want to repeat that thing over and over and over again, so this is how we do it. We've got a loop, and the loop will run your code over and over and over again. And then you learn recursion, and they say the same thing. When you want to run the same function over and over and over again, that's recursion. Well, that's true, but they have different uses. So I'm going to look at a couple of simple examples of looping and recursion, and then talk about a better place to use recursion, and then talk about the impact of using asynchronous functions, asynchronous methods like uh, Ajax or set timeout, set interval, uh, promises, talking to databases, things that take an indeterminate amount of time, and how these can impact looping and recursion. So first of all, a simple loop. I've got a log statement. I'm going to write out that I'm starting the loop. And then after the loop runs, I'm going to write out ending the loop. Inside, I'm just going to write out my loop counter. So I'm going to go from 0 to zero to 9, write this out. Simple enough. Here's my comment that I started it. Here's the code inside the loop running. And here's the code that I've ended the loop. Nothing earth shattering. That's what a loop does. It runs this bit of code inside over and over and over again. All right, fair enough. Now, recursion, very similar, but what we're going to do with recursion is we have a function. So I've created a function here called recce for recursion. And what recce is going to do is it's going to write out the value of some variable. It's going to increment that variable. It's going to check the value of that variable. And if it meets a certain condition, it calls the function again very much like a loop. You've got an initial value, you're incrementing or decrementing something, and you're testing it to know whether or not you're going to leave the loop. Well, same sort of the idea. Recursion. I'm calling the function over and over and over again. From somewhere in my code, I'm going to call the function. It's going to run again and again and again and again and again until it reaches this condition that I've defined to say, hey, okay, it's time to stop. Then I don't call it anymore. Then the JavaScript interpreter comes back and will finish this line. So if I run this, oh, got to save it first. There we go. So inside the recursion. So my comment beforehand, my comment afterwards, and here's the code running inside of it. Same effect, because this is all going on the main JavaScript. JavaScript stack. It's calling all of these lines of command in order. So it does the log statement, then it calls the function, it runs this function, and then the function says, hey, you're supposed to call yourself again. Hey, you're supposed to call yourself again. And it keeps going and going and going in this little loop until it no longer calls it. Once it no longer calls it, it gets down to the end of the function and says, all right, I'm done. I can come back to here and the next line of code can run. Just like a loop, I get the statement before, the statement after, all the code inside runs before this line afterwards. The only difference is I'm sending it off to a function and the function is calling itself. This is the part that's known as recursion. Now, a use case for recursion, where would I do that? Countdowns. I'm going to uncomment my code here. Same idea. I'm going to call my function, which is going to be called countdown. I'm going to pass a value in. Now, here I could have passed the value in as well to start. That didn't matter. But I'm passing this value in to here. Now, my size is 120. That's just the starting value. Passing in the starting value is 120. Then I'm going to write out the letter x 120 times. I'm then going to recalculate size as 95% of its original value and check to make sure it's still greater than 2. And as long as it's still greater than 2, I'm going to call the function again. The only difference is this value was 95% of the original value that was passed in. So I'm counting down and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller until it's no longer running. Run this. Again, I didn't save. <laughs> there we go. 
and this is recursion in action. So I've got 120 x's, and then there's 95% of that, and then I've got 95% of that value, and 95%, and on and on and on and on until I get down to one single line of x's, and then it just keeps going, 95% until it gets down to 3, and then 95% rounded down was less than 2, or less than 3, so it didn't call this anymore. This is a practical use for recursion. When you want to reduce an amount or increase an amount over and over and over again, and do something with that value, uh, you want to do an animation on the screen, you want to make something shrink away, recursion is a great way to do that. You want to do an animation on the screen where you're randomly selecting something and you're showing a value on the screen. Uh, maybe it's a random number you're showing again and again and again, but each time you show it, it's for a shorter and shorter period of time that you're showing it on the screen until you get down to so fast it's a blur, you can't see it, and then you stop and you reveal what the winning number was. That's a practical use for recursion. All right, last section here working with asynchronous methods. Ajax calls, talking to a database, doing a promise, doing set timeout or set interval. I'm carrying out some sort of function that I don't know exactly when it's going to be finished. If I do the same thing with my log statements as I was doing before, where I have one before, one after, and then inside of here I call fetch. Go get this URL. And when it gets back, I'll get my response, I'll convert that. Uh, my URL, I've got to find up here. I'm just going to get some JSON data. And I'll say response, convert it to the JSON, extract the JSON from my response object, turn that into actual JSON data, and then I will log out my data. I'll do json.stringify with the data. All right, that's my log statement. There we go. Now, if I run this, it looks like the code's linear. It looks like I'm going to do one line of code, and then I'll do this, which will go to this, which will go to this, and write this out, and then I'll get to this line of code. But that's not what's going to happen. I'm calling the first line, this log, and then this one runs right after it, because this one was not ready to run yet. A fetch goes and makes a request. It goes off on the network. It You don't know how long it's going to take. It could take a fraction of a second, maybe 20 milliseconds. Maybe it's going to take two seconds. Maybe it's going to take two minutes. Maybe it's never going to return. We don't know. So we're not going to sit around waiting for this to happen. This is actually being launched off on another thread. The primary thread is going to display the log, and then it's going to say, all right, start up another thread, fire off this request, and then I'm going to go back to what I was doing, which is the next line of code. Now, because we don't know how long these things are going to take, it means that if I put this inside of a loop, Let's create a loop counter C. C is less than 4. C++. There we go. Now I'm going to call this 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's four times it's going to be called. And here's the result. And here's the results, and here's the result, and here's the result. There's the four results that came back. But I still got this after, before, all four of the results. I can do this a hundred times, and I'm still going to get this line before I get any of these. We can't just take this and put it into a variable and use it in the normal flow of our code. If I were to put a console log statement here, my counter variable in there with that. Okay, this console log statement, that's going to happen in line with the other ones. This is a, a normal command happening on the main thread. This log's going to fire, the loop's going to begin, 
It's going to launch this request, and then it's going to write this out with this variable d. That's going to be written out. It's going to do that four times, and then it's going to write this, and then at some point we'll get the result back from these fetch calls. Change this to 2 just to reduce the amount of text that we've got showing up here. However, what we have in here is not the result of this. This D is going to hold a promise. It's going to say, okay, yeah, you've made a request. At some point in the future, it's going to come back. I'll give you an object that says, yeah, okay, I promise I'm going to give you a result. It's a promise object that comes back. Clear this off, run this again. And you can see there was a blink there, about to fetch. That's our first line. And then 0, 1, promise pending, promise pending. That's what D is. D is not the result of the fetch. It's not the response object. It's not the data. These are things that are happening off in the future. While my loop is running, that's when I'm running this log statement. And this object represents the fact that I've sent off the fetch, and it is pending. I've sent off another one, and it's pending. And then I'm running out the log statement that's after my loop is finished. Now, whether I do recursion or I do a for loop, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is this is an asynchronous function, which means you cannot use it in line, inside of a loop, inside of recursion, or put it in a variable and use it on the next line of code. It's always going to be somewhere down the line. So keep that in mind when you're writing your loops, when you're writing recursion, that asynchronous functions, they're not going to work along with the rest of your code. They're not going to play happily with your code because they're off on their own thread. All right, I hope that helps you with both recursion, looping, as well as understanding a little bit more about asynchronous functions. As always, thanks for watching.